Okay, so tonight I wanted to take a quick look at uh, one of my favorite pens in my collection. It's this pen. This is a 1920s or 30s Schaefer black chased hard rubber flat top. Uh, it's a lever filler pen. This one has a particularly awesome flex nib on it. Um, I found that these Schaefer nibs in these self fillers a lot of them you know if they have a profile that looks kind of like this thin shoulders like that they tend to be very flexible and not only very flexible but the responsiveness of the metal is second to none no no company does it better that i've seen thus far i have multiple that are that are just just like this this one's the best but very close and they're really really amazing i'm a, I'm a waterman you know fan through and through but but these pens, in terms of responsiveness, you know, Waterman's not touching them. I really haven't seen any, and I have, I have 25 Waterman nibs in my collection now. Flex nibs, I've had many more. Anyway, um, this pen is really a nice writer. The issue with these these Schaefer's, what I found is that the feeds don't always keep up. Uh, and, and at least in the old rubber self fillers with these flexible nibs, the feeds have a hard time keeping up. You got a lot of railroading, just can't keep up, and and it takes a, a really spectacular feed to keep up with a nib like this. That's that's, you know, going from extra fine to two and a half millimeter stripes down the page, back and forth. It's it's really quite extraordinary that they they can write at all like they do, um, especially considering the time that they were made and kind of how rudimentary the processes were that, that made these, but they were handmade ebonite feeds and and uh, they tune them as good as they can. Now, like I said, these ones have a, a hard time keeping up. So this one particularly, I have modified a little bit, opened up the rear mouth of the feed, um, you know, to, to get a little bit more flow and it writes pretty well now. So I, I wanted to uh, give you a little demonstration of just how well this little pen writes. Okay, now it should, uh, I was thinking when I moved the camera there, it should be known that I really don't like cutting up feeds like this. Cutting it up is what they call it. Um, and that's really what you're doing. You know, you're, you're, you're doing things to it that cannot be undone. And you never really want to do that to something that's difficult to replace like this. A 100-year-old tool like this. So it does kind of you know, stink to do that, but you have to do it sometimes. Try to do it as infrequently as possible for sure um, in this case it was just unavoidable all right so let's see what we can do it's a little shape for this pen the cap is really nice chasing the barrel not so much um, so these are mis mismatched barrel and cap more than likely um, but this cap is really nice actually it has a nice sharp clip on it I have um, the Van S Tears of Clown, I believe it's called. I think that was given to me by one of my friends that uh, I, I really, really like. It's kind of like a pink, purple, burgundy type color. Nice thing about, one of the nicest things about this, this pen is it's really a nice writer, just a regular writer as well. Um, Very smooth, regular writer. Tears of Clown. All right, so we'll get a little bit of flex action going here. If you want to, you know, write with this pen, just a little bit of flair, you're writing a letter or so. You could, you know, miss a little bit of pressure. We'll get you a really nice little bit um, of flex. I don't know who Susie is, but... This is very light pressure, mind you. you 
can see it flexing and, and how responsive it is as well. That's really awesome, awesome responsiveness. This thing is amazing. The, the metal is just beautiful, really, really nice. Whatever, whatever they did, uh, the thickness, everything about them is just perfect. They were really, really nicely made nibs. That's why I use a fountain pen right there. I mean, you can never get writing like that with anything else. I just think that's so cool. So let's see if we can get the feed to keep up a little bit if we start to push it a little bit. You can see this nib is just ridiculous. If you let it sit for a little bit, it will keep up better as well. I just obviously inked it right up. Well, I didn't, you, sent, you didn't see that, but I just inked it right up and started writing with it. Let's see right there. And those those blobs are themselves are probably three millimeters all of these and this is no problem and it's not like some nibs where it doesn't feel good to do this this is no problem for this thing it, you know, it's dead dead straight nib really cool caliper out quickly. And these were while I was writing. This is only like 2.3. This one's a little wider. 2.4 or so, so two and a half probably. If you push it, you know, with regular pressure. If I pushed it, I think I could get, I think I could easily get three millimeters out of this nib just based on other nibs I've done. Not easily, but I think I could. I mean, you would never want to, but it does an easy two and a half. I mean, those were no problem to, to take those shots, obviously. So that's about it for the little Schaefer. Um, thanks for watching. As always, I'm going to be posting more videos uh, very soon, um, more flex pens as always, more vintage flex. Stay tuned on eBay, I'm going to be posting, I got some really nice nibs coming up um, on some really nice pens. So again, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.